Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of Love Light Images and in this video I'm going to try and address a question I get asked a lot, often at this time of year, around, around New Year, around the holidays. Um, what are you going to do differently in your photography in the coming year? Now, um, we've had a couple of unusual years, I think everyone will agree, and a lot of people are saying to me, I've lost some of my interest in photography. Now, people I know have taken to printing their work, and that's great because I always say, you know, print your photos, um, and it's a great way of discovering more about your photos, why you took them. Um, photos that are useful to you. But anyway, a, a few thoughts on a problem I myself have as a working photographer. I get the excuse to go out and take photographs sometimes because people pay me to go and do it. Now that's fine in normal times, but uh, our work has been very thin over the last couple of years, so uh, it applies to myself as well. What I would say is that new camera gear and this is often the time people think of getting, you know, got a new camera for Christmas or something like that, is often not the answer. Um, it's not about getting new cameras, new lenses, new software, new computer. It is about using them. And that's the key that I think a lot of people forget. They, they have that burst of enthusiasm on getting a new bit of kit um, and then they don't use it much more than they used to use it. Which would suggest that quite often the camera you already have, the lenses you already have, are actually perfectly good for what you want to do. Um, I have no need for a new camera. I, I would quite happily swap my Canon 5DS for a Canon R5, but it doesn't bring anything particularly new to the table in terms of what I do. Um, and, you know, obviously it's not cheap buying new gear, uh, not at the sort of level I expect to use it at, so I'm not going to be buying a new camera unless I can see a genuine difference to make. I've got more than enough kit. Um, I've reviewed lots of printers over the year, um, last couple of years really, printers, all kinds of stuff. I've made lots of prints. Now, I tend to print similar images. Part of that is because I know those images, I know what they look like, and I am testing printers. But I also print quite a lot of stuff myself. I go back through older photos, photos that I've more recently taken, and just print them, just because I can. Now, I'm lucky in having a supply of printers, paper and things to test, but you don't need to be that profligate to step up the amount of prints you're making. Or if you've never thought of printing, think about how you might want to get into printing some of your images. Well, there goes a profiling target on canvas. I was testing this uh, printer here for canvas printing. Uh, as I said, it's not getting the new kit, it's how you make use of it that really makes a difference. Um, and that, I think, it's worth going through, looking at what you've got. Look at all those lenses you've got, if you've got multiple lenses, and think, well, why did I get this one? Have I used it? What could I use it for? As I say, print photos. Um, you don't need an absolute top-end printer to start printing. Uh, this is an Epson P700, relatively expensive printer. I've looked at cheaper printers as well. Now, there are some limitations on it, and for the level of print that I want to make, I would say I don't want to use those cheaper printers because of what I want out of it, but that's not a reason not to get into doing uh, printing. So, even printers like the little Canon G550 I looked at, uh, um, an ink tank printer, so relatively cheap. You can get into doing lots of prints, have a go at it. Uh, it really does make a difference. If you want a challenge, have a look around your house and think, I want to print a photo to go in a particular space on a particular wall. Now, you may well have to ask other people in the house their opinions as to what they'd like. Well, that's not a bad thing. You may even be asked to put, produce a, color, a print that matches the curtains um, or, some, or the colour scheme of the room. Now you can address that in framing, but also what are you going to put in the print? What do you like to see? What do other people like to see? This is really useful if you're ever thinking of uh, putting prints in exhibitions at galleries and the likes. Um, get used to taking other people's views into account. 
great if it's the walls of your office then sure you can just go and put whatever photo you like on the wall but if it's somewhere for other people as well get you into thinking perhaps a different way about some of your photos have you got any photos that you'd put on the wall do you think the photos are the sort of people photos that people would want to see on the wall does that matter well it might it might not but you need to think about it another thing i've i've said before about one way i get inspiration is to just get old photo books now go to um, second-hand bookshops and the like they quite often will have a photography section they do not need to be new books if you shoot digital photography you do not need to get books about digital photography it's the essence of the pictures that counts although i notice um in this one i, I picked out this is the uh, uh, photography annual 1971 now, I was 11 when this came out. Um, I did have a camera at the time. Um, if I remember rightly, it was an old Russian Zenith film camera. Um, still got a few pictures I probably took then. Uh, I'm sure if I looked at them now, I'd wonder what the hell I was doing, why I took these photos, and I'd find... But then, you know, that was a long while ago. So, I look at this. But actually, as well as the photographs and there are lots of photographs in mostly black and white um, so there's some photos by a guy called Gerald, Gerald Lacey um, you know you just find pictures and people who took them uh, these are black and white ones these are film shots landscapes landscapes I haven't shot any landscapes in black and white for a while this is something I ought to think of doing but also one of the bits I do like looking at is some of the adverts um, we have here um, an advert for um, a Pentax SLR um, and the strap line of it is a lot of people took us up on our invitation to just hold a Pentax many of them bought one in fact more than any other single lens reflex well there we go oh and a twin lens reflex camera as well this was 1971 uh, everything was filmed and um, there is Canon advert what makes your camera out of date? These three, oh no, it's not camera, this is these three brilliant cameras from Pentacon. Yeah, that's a, a Practica and a Pentacon 6. Yep, I remember those. Um, we've got lots of adverts for chemicals. Now, yeah, yeah this, is, this is stuff that maybe you think, oh, I'll take up film. Well, film is a technical challenge as much as anything um, these days. It's a technique to learn. Um, I've done film in the past and I had no great desire to do it again. If you want to have a go at film, have a go at it. It's not as easy as it was years ago. Um, it's more difficult to get the chemicals and everything like that. It's not as common. You can't just take your film to the lab around the corner and get it processed. It's much more difficult like that. But it's an interesting technical exercise. <clears throat> However, I have to say that I regard it as a technical exercise. It's not a, um, it, it's not something I would do for artistic purposes. But you know, if that's what inspires you, have a go at doing it. It's not cheap. Um, somebody told me once, they said, oh, digital was too easy. Uh, well, if you say that digital photography is too easy, then you're not doing it right. Um, it doesn't have to be easy. It can be complex as well. Oh, there's a Canon advert. There we go. Lots of Canon lenses. Uh, the interesting thing about these, uh, all these lenses in this old um, book here is that most of them you could actually use again now with adapters on mirrorless cameras. So um, have a look at old lenses. Just pick a lens, go out, do something. This is not rocket science. Um, I've reminded myself of stuff like this most years, some of which I actually get around to doing. Um, it's part of the reason I do the articles, the reviews and everything like that. But I would also say, if you're getting a bit stuck in your photography, remember the other stuff you've done. Go and do some other stuff. Now, all right, there may be some problems these days with, uh, with just going out. Uh, we don't know how these things are gonna change, but read some books, do something else, go somewhere if you can. Um, in terms of the books, possibly what more people think of when I say read, get, uh, I like reading books, this is a really nice uh, book here. Uh, this is uh, photographs by Ezra Stoller and these are architectural photographs. 
Now, I like looking at this, this book. Here we go, there's some nice pictures there. Now, I will admit when I look at a book like this, I do mostly look at the pictures. Um, you know, I read textbooks, I read all kinds of books, but when I get a photography book out, I just look through it, look at the pictures, uh, see which ones grab my attention. Some of them give me ideas for photography. Others remind me that I need to find locations. So there's a couple of examples there. That for architectural photography, um, quite a lot of my commercial photography is of buildings which are utterly dull. Uh, they're industrial units, um, glorified sheds. Now, I can take great looking photos of sheds, but they're not the kind of photos I want to print. So it, it's, a, it's a book like this that just gives me a bit of inspiration about the sort of stuff I want to go out and do a bit more of. I don't necessarily need to travel for this. Now, similarly looking through other books, give me ideas for other types of photography. It's whatever interests you worth having a go. But um, what I would say is lay off the social media as well. Um, likes are nothing but an invention of the people who develop social media software to try and addict you to its use. Um, uh, they count for nothing. Um, and I'm aware of the slight irony of saying this on a YouTube video. But, you know, uh, well, you have to accept that. Have a look at how you use social media. Are you actually getting anything from it over the longer term? Is it anything other than just a tick box? Um, I mean, personally, I've never had the slightest interest in Instagram. Facebook, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole for a whole host of reasons. Um, have a think about what you're doing and you know, how your photography is getting out there, if it's what you really want. But above all, and this has to be the message I'd want to give to myself as well as others, is find the hard stuff. Find the stuff you are slightly uncomfortable with. Find the stuff that when you've done it, you'll look at that and think, oh, that was good, glad I did that. So hopefully this is of some interest. I've got lots of other videos looking at aspects, obviously, of professional photography. I've got a few book reviews as well, uh, cover different books, uh, things I've looked at and that. But what I would say is take more photos. And if you don't already do it, have a think about printing. Printing really does make a difference. So um, there you go. Hopefully that's been of some interest. And if it inspires somebody, then great. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Um, it's one of those little ticks that we really do appreciate. Um, and uh, if you've got any thoughts or suggestions, always feel free to email me at Northlight Images. Um, I'm always keen to hear how people address this issue because I know it's something that most photographers face at various times. Um, some of us more often than others. But uh, thank you for watching and I hope it's been of use. Cheers.